Hello there, senior high school students, and welcome to our new lesson. This video is for senior high school general mathematics for grade 11. Friendly reminders. Do not forget your paper and pen for you to write your solutions later on. And remember, you can always pause and play this video whenever necessary. So are you ready for our new lesson? Let's begin! This video presentation is for the first quarter, Module 1 of the subject General Mathematics for Grade 11. The topic is Real Life Functions. To be specific, this is for Lesson 3.1 under Operations of Functions, specifically for Addition of Functions. What you need to know. At the end of the session, you are expected to follow the steps in adding functions and add functions. So we have two main goals for this session. What's in? Let's recall the rules on how to add integers properly. Now I know for a fact that you find this very elementary because you had this in your past years. That's specifically in your junior high school from grade 7, right? Now, do not worry, we'll just have a run-through of the rules for us to concretize our learning on those topics. So let's have now rule number 1. So let's have 2 plus 9. Rule number one of addition of integers states that the sum of two positive integers is a positive integer. So for example, we have here 2, which is positive, and we add it to another positive integer that is 9. So the expected answer here will be positive, since that's rule number 1. Now, allow me to introduce to you another way or a strategy that we can use to remember each of the rules, beginning with rule number 1. So here, when we say positive, let's have a color coding for that or code for that. Let's use the color red. So here, that's for positive positive 2, and this one is for positive 9 since they have the same sign, which is positive. Now remember, or notice that since they have the same color, so that means we can combine the two integers, leading us to a positive 11. So that's it. Remember that if they have the same sign, thus the same color, you can combine and the result will also be the same sign. Okay, let's have another one. Rule number 2. What if the two integers are negative? So here, the rule states that the sum of two negative integers is a negative integer. So here, in our example, we have negative 2. Again, the sign there is negative, And we have also negative 9. Making use of the strategy that we've introduced earlier, this time we will not anymore use the color red because that's for positive. Let's use color blue like this. And for negative 9, like this. Observe that they have the same color. Or that would be our way of remembering that we can combine the two and we will have a negative 11 since the color of the result is negative. It will follow the sign since both have the negative sign. Were you able to follow? Okay, rule number three. What if only one is negative and the other one is positive, meaning they have different signs? So here, rule number three states that if the signs are different, subtract the numbers and use the sign of the larger number. Again, if they have different signs like this, we have negative 2 and the other one is 9, getting the sum of the integers, the process is you're going to subtract the numbers and use the sign of the larger number. So let's use here negative 2 like this for a blue color and 9 like this, similar to earlier. So you're going to subtract like this and the result will be a red since that will be for the larger number. In this example, 9 is larger than 2, thus we will follow the sign of positive 9. So the result is positive 7. So let's check if you were able to follow. Try this. 5 plus negative 8. Which of the following is the right answer? I'll give you 5 counts.
The correct answer is negative three. Correct. Very good. This is an application for rule number three. So you have like this. You're going to subtract. So the answer is three, having or following the color of the bigger number. That's negative eight. Good. Next, let's try this. Negative five plus negative eight. I'll give you five counts. The answer is negative 13. The answer is negative 13. This is for rule number two. You're adding two negative integers. Thus, we follow the sign and we add the number. So 5 plus 8, that's 13. The answer is negative 13 following the sign. How about negative 5 plus 8? I'll give you five counts. The answer is positive 3. Correct. Well done. This is again a rule number 3. So we are going to subtract the numbers. 8 minus 5 will give us a 3 and we follow the sign of the bigger number. In this example, the bigger number now is 8. So we now have positive 3. Hopefully that will refresh your minds on how to add integers. So this time, let's have what's new. How to add functions. In adding functions like f of x and g of x, we will follow this notation. f of x plus g of x, or we can use this, f plus g of x. Again, you read it as f plus g of x. Let's have this. For example, your f of x is equal to 3x plus 2, and your g of x is equal to 4 minus 5x. So how do we add the two functions here? Let's follow some steps. We have here step 1, write the sum, like this. We will have this notation, f plus g of x. Then we have here equals 3x plus 2 plus 4 minus 5x. Now, how did we come up with that? This one is, observe that that will be your f of x, 3x plus 2, enclosed in a parenthesis. And the other one will be your g of x, that's 4 minus 5x, enclosed in a parenthesis. So every time we add the two functions, do not forget that we need to enclose it in a parenthesis. Second, arrange. We are going to arrange the terms according to the degree from highest to lowest degree. So here, notice that negative 5x and 4 must be interchanged to arrange the polynomial. So it will be like this. Negative 5x plus 4 for g of x. So from here, we are going to introduce two methods on how to get our answer. So let's start with method number one. This is for the horizontal method. So all of our answers are written horizontally. So this would be it. They, let's take out the parenthesis, so it will look like this, but we are going to retain this parenthesis inside our negative expression. After that, we have this. We are going to combine like terms. So we have 3x and negative 5, so they're written beside each other. And the other one is for both constants, 2 and 4. Now going back right here, we are going to apply the rules of adding integers for the numerical coefficients. Positive 3 and negative 5. So we are going to add that. And we are also going to do the same thing for the constants 2 and 4. So let's reveal the answer. So the answer is negative 2x plus 6. Why? Because this one, how did we get negative 2x? That's from 3x plus negative 5x. 3 plus negative 5 following rule number 3 would give us a negative 2. Okay, and we copy the variable x, so the result is negative 2x. We get 6 from the sum of 2 and 4, following rule number 1. Okay, so that's negative 2x plus 6. Let's have the second method. This time, it's for the vertical method. So for the vertical method, what we have here is for f of x, 3x plus 2, and we also have g of x, negative 5x plus 4, already arranged according to the decreasing order of its degree. We are going to align expressions having the same degree. So in this example, we have 3x and negative 5x, so we are going to use the rules of adding integers, so the result will be negative 2x, right? Then the next one is we have 2 and 4, 
that will give us a positive 6. So the answer is negative 2x plus 6, similar to our horizontal method. Observe that we also have here the factors. When you write negative 2x as the first expression, it could be written as negative 2 times x, right? And 6 can also be written as negative 2 times negative 3. Now, what do I mean by that? Because another way of writing our answer here is using our con common monomial factor which you've learned in your junior high school grade 8 level. There. So our common monomial factor is negative 2, right there. Remaining inside the parenthesis would be the first expression x followed by the negative 3. So that will be our binomial. So aside from negative 2x plus 6, we can write it in this way. Negative 2 multiplied to x minus 3. Let's try this. Find f plus g of x if you're given f of x is 4x plus 2x squared minus 2, and your g of x is equal to 4 minus 3x. You may pause this video and solve for this. You may do it now. Let's reveal the answer. Let's use method number 2, which is the vertical method. So from here, you're given that f of x is equal to this, right? That's 4x plus 2x squared minus 2. Again, your f of x is 4x plus 2x squared minus 2. Observe that it's not yet arranged in decreasing order of its degree. So we are going to arrange first the given polynomial. Same process for g of x since it's not yet arranged. 4 minus 3x, so let's interchange that. So it would look like this. Okay, that's it. So we have 2x squared plus 4x minus 2 for our f of x, and we also have negative 3x plus 4 for our g of x. Notice that we are arranging or we are aligning the expressions according to its degree. So here, we align negative 3x to 4x since they have the same degree. Same with 4 and negative 2 or since both are constant. So let's have the first one. Since 2x squared is alone, it doesn't have a pair, the answer is still the same. We'll just copy 2x squared. Now, the second line, we have 4x and negative 3x. Following the rules of adding integers, we have positive 4 and negative 3. That's rule number 3 would give us a positive 1. Copy x, so we have plus x. And the last line there is negative 2 plus 4 will give us a positive 2. So the final answer here is 2x squared plus x plus 2. So that's for the vertical method. I'll, I will also be showing the horizontal method for clarification purposes. So this is it. So here, I copied f of x and arranged it already. So same with our g of x. After that, I combined like terms since 2x squared doesn't have a match for g of x. So it will be like this alone. Then 4x will be... Yes, beside negative 3x, so it's plus negative 3x, same with neg negative 2 will be beside positive 4. We are going to combine like terms here. So we'll copy first 2x squared, combine 4x, and negative 3x will give us a positive x, and negative 2 plus 4 will give us a positive 2. You may actually pause this video for, to clarify on the steps and to check if your answer is the same with, with the one shown on the screen. Are we good? Let's continue. What's more, I prepared here a five-item assessment for you to check your understanding of our lesson 3.1. So it's your turn. You need to find the value of f plus g of x using the two functions given in each number. You may review our video and go back to that portion showing the solution of this for you to clarify some things. You may pause this video or take a screenshot of this and answer during your available time. If you are using the same module, do not forget to submit your answers to your teacher, to your mathematics teachers on your agreed date and time. Last one, what you need to remember. Remember that the sum of the functions can be written as this, f of x plus g of x, or you can write it in this notation, f plus g of x. Second, you can add functions horizontally or, or vertically after arranging the terms according to their degrees. Last one, 
These are the steps in adding your functions. Write the functions into this, f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x. Reorder the functions by degree of terms. And lastly, add functions horizontally or vertically. So that's it. We are done with lesson 3.1. So good job for today and see you in the next lesson.